Hi everyone, my name is Jennifer and today I'm going to be talking about a highly controversial subject and that is when Iron had a lover. This is a highly controversial subject because I feel like there's a lot of objectivists that they don't like talking about it because they would prefer nobody to know about it but I think it's one of those things that you have to talk about it, you can't hide it. So for those of you who don't know, I'm gonna give you a little bit of background. Basically there's a big controversy that she had, she was married and she had had a lover called Nathaniel Brandon that was 25 years younger than her. They had a relationship for a couple of years but then they had a falling out and basically Iran tried to hide the relationship but it went, when, uh, when it got out everybody was oh my gosh what the fuck Iran had, had a lover and he was so young and oh my gosh what, what does this mean? She preaches about morality and ethics and why would you go and do this? Like does this discredit her? Blah blah blah. That's, that's like a debate that's happening. But the argument I want to make is that you can judge what Iran did as something bad and yet still regard her philosophy as good. Now before I begin my scholarly analysis, I want to clarify that I am not an expert in philosophy nor am I an Iran historian. I'm just an Iran enthusiast who has read a lot of non-fiction, objectivist literature and whatnot. So I feel comfortable speaking on the subject and passing moral judgment on it. Alright, so let's jump into the story. For this story, I had to read this book written by Nathaniel Brandon. It's called Judgment Day. It's a very very dark book and it tells a very detailed story of the affair but it also spends a lot of time going over Nathaniel Brandon's life ever since he was a teenager to after his affair with Iran. It's his memoir, right? So aside from reading this I also read Barbara Brandon's The Passion of Ayn Rand and Barbara Brandon is Nathaniel Bra was Nathaniel Brandon's wife and she also was a friend of Ayn Rand. They all knew each other so she wrote kind of like a biography of Ayn Rand's life. So The Passion of Ayn Rand is a, like a biography of Ayn Rand and this is just Nathaniel Brandon's memoir. So actually in The Passion of Ayn Rand, Barbara just barely glosses over the affair. She doesn't really give details, she just tells you what happened but she doesn't give much background. But in this book there's a lot of gossip, a lot of tea, so many details and the fact is that you have to take this with a grain of salt because obviously this is written from Nathaniel Brandon's perspective. It's hard to know what's truth, although I personally think a lot of this is truth. It's just that I find some things a little bit hard to believe because he has a lot of verbatim conversations, like word for word conversations between him and Iran, or between him and his ex wife, or between him and other people. And these are conversations that happened years and years before he actually wrote the book. So I'm just like, how does he remember what was said? Anyway, so yes, I personally, for the most part, believe everything that he says in the book but I'm not saying it's not possible that some of these things that he might have taken some creative liberties with this story and another thing is that in this book he portrays Ayn Rand as like this like volatile moody character and I don't know if that's true but it is believable I mean she was a human being and she was very passionate so it is possible that she was you know <laughs> a human being that had ups and downs in her psychology, in her personality, in her mood. So I've never thought of Ayn Rand as like a flawless flawless being just because I consider her philosophy to be flawless. There's a difference between her philosophy and her actions and her views and her opinions on things. Anyway, so let's start with what went on. So I don't just want to talk about the affair itself, I want to give you a background on Brandon's life because obviously this is Brandon's uh, this is told from Brandon's perspective and this is gonna help you understand a little bit more everyone's actions because it, it, it's a crazy story and so obviously I'm not gonna go over everything I'm gonna try to summarize this as much as possible but we do start from the beginning when Brandon was 14 years old so this all started when Nathaniel Brandon his real name was actually Nathan uh, Nathan 
Blumenthal. Yeah, Nathan Blumenthal. But uh, later he changes his name after meeting Ayn Rand. Anyway, so Nathaniel, he was 14 years old. He was from Canada. And one time he ended up reading The Fountainhead because his sisters were reading it. And so he was curious and he read it. And obviously he was like, oh my gosh, this book is so amazing. Who wrote this? I need to learn more. He, he you know, he tried to find more of uh, Ayn Rand's work. So uh, before we go into that exchange of letters, we need to go back to Canada for a little bit because around this time when uh, Nathaniel was 18, he met Barbara. Uh, she had a different last name, but let's call her Barbara Brandon for now. So he met Barbara uh, and she was just a year older than her, him. Uh, she was 19 and they had one thing in common. She, al she had also read The Fountainhead and so they hit it off right away. They, they formed this friendship. But of course, Nathaniel was like, ooh, a girl who likes the fountain head he had romantic interest for her uh, he fell in love for her right away and at first she had you know some sort of romantic interest but then it became clear that she wasn't like 100% as interested in him as he was in her so even though they have ended up dating eventually she actually was seeing guys on the side and eventually confessed this to him like oh my gosh I I hooked up with my ex-boyfriend or I hooked up with this guy this happened a couple of times and, and every time this would happen like Natalia would be like oh my gosh how could she do this to me I thought she was like a great woman and she seemed we seem to have this connection and I love her so much and he would be devastated but then she would like ask for forgiveness and tell him that those guys had nothing on him that he was like the person she really liked so they would get back together and eventually they broke up again but they they remained friends because you know they just had a, a really deep connection anyway so when he was 18 I think that's when and he starts corresponding with Ayn Rand and they're talking about philosophy and politics, how her ideas apply to politics and blah, blah, blah. So eventually, because Ayn Rand was very impressed with how he communicated himself with, in letters, she's like, hey, if you're ever in California, come and visit me. And he was like, oh my gosh, like an opportunity to meet Ayn Rand. And he actually was in California. She was in, Lo um, he and Barbara when were in Los Angeles studying at UCLA. They were going to college there. So one day, uh, Nathaniel made plans with Ayn to go visit her in her home in Chatsworth, California. I think that's where she lived. So when he arrived, she greets him. Well, first he's greeted by Frank and then Ayn Rand comes down the stairs and he's like, oh my God. Like first he's a little bit shocked because he imagined like a, a younger, hotter woman, but he's still like impressed. Like, oh my gosh, this is Ayn Rand, the author of The Fountainhead, like the author of these ideas I admire so much. And so they started talking and right away there was like connection like even though he was only 18 and Ayn Rand was uh, probably in her 40s she was very impressed by him and so they they develop a relationship where they started visiting visiting her and Frank and eventually he asked Ayn Rand if he could bring his friend Barbara because he, he knew that she would love to meet her so eventually Barbara starts visiting Ayn Rand too and, and it just becomes this friendship of four people Frank O'Connor, Ayn Rand, Barbara and Nathaniel they all become friends and it, this is one of the fascinating things about this story is that when their relationship their friendship began Ayn Rand had almost like a parent-like affection for them so let me read you something that Ayn Rand wrote about uh, Nathaniel and Barbara and this is documented in letters of Ayn Rand oh this is this is a letter that she wrote to Nathaniel and in this excerpt it says now as to the personal element it might please you to know that you have discouraged me about the joys of motherhood when we kept receiving your very amusing postcards from the road i thought i should really adopt you I mean, she's talking about adopting him, but then she ends up sleeping with him. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. Uh, anyways, there's some other interesting things that she says about them. They are also documented here in Layers of Ayn Rand. Let me find the page is on four, page 73. She's writing, oh, she's writing to Barbara's mother about Nathaniel and Barbara. And she says, yeah, this is the only quality that I really like about people. So you will understand my interest in Barbara and Nathan. They are both remarkable children who will have a very hard time among the present day intellectuals. She was referring to them as children. It's just weird to know that they end up having sex. 
So anyways, this friendship continues and eventually Barbara and Nathaniel, they restart their relationship. I just, I don't remember the details, but it, it, I think it, like they start again, they stop it. But anyways, they could never, even, even if they were dating or not dating, they were always friends. Even if Barbara would cheat on him, they would always find their way back to each other. So let's take a pause here because there's some things I need to say about all of their relationships. Ayn Rand was married to Frank and she will often speak to him as a hero. But I have read in many places, biographies, um, I mean, uh, Barbara's biography, Nathaniel's memoir, and I think some other, some other places that say that Frank was not really as heroic as Ayn Rand would like to think. He was a really nice guy, very chill, super polite but he wasn't an intellectual like I ran he didn't have a job really uh, he had quit acting uh, after marrying I ran so most of his activities were just like maybe driving I ran around or just taking care of their ranch at least in Los Angeles they had a big ranch so he would take care of it so a lot of people when they first met them they were like this is I ran's husband I mean he's really nice but like he's not like a hero like she would like to tell people so that was one thing that would hustle people like what kind of why do they see in each other and why does she see in him so this will give you a hint about what's gonna happen in the future I mean by this point Ayn Rand's in her 40s and she had he she's like start for a mind that is like her a mind that it, she can she can really talk about the type of things she thinks about and even though probably Frank was the kind of person that would really listen to her he was just not at that level intellectually so she was she was like hungry for interacting with a mind that matched her mind anyways so Frank and I moved to New York and the friendship is rekindled even though they had been corresponding all this time they hang out all the time like maybe not every day but like almost every day uh, Barbara and Nathaniel come to hang out with Frank and Ayn and around this time like Nathaniel and Ayn's relationship is strengthening their they're becoming intellectual allies she praises him about how smart he is and he even gets her to be slightly interested in psychology because she was zero interested in psychology and he kind of made her make her be a little bit interested in it because that's why he was uh, he was studying he was studying psychology <sighs> so anyways um, I think it's I'm not sure exactly when but I think when Nathaniel is 22 I believe he and Barbara get married and this is like a huge mistake that some it's like somewhere deep down Nathaniel knows this is a mistake but he does it anyway and he thinks it's a mistake because even though he really loves Barbara she just doesn't love him like that she she tells him that she loves him but her actions are different like she doesn't respond to him sexually she's not even though she will have she has sex with him she's not really interested in having sex with him and she very briefly before they got married she had cheated on him with someone else but she promised him like once we get married like that's it for me I will never cheat on you <laughs> it's so crazy because Barbara doesn't say any of, of her own uh, I don't think she mentions any of her own mistake in the passion of Ayn Rand she like mentions the affair that Ayn and Nathaniel had but she never says like oh yeah I used to make Nathaniel's life impossible with how many times I cheated on him anyways they get married but like probably they should have never gotten married because they were just not a good man I mean she wasn't really in love with him him and eventually they're gonna find out they're not even compatible in their personalities but we're not at that point yet so they get married Frank and Ayn are like their mates of honor or the, whatever it's all crazy but anyways they get married and the friend continues and Ayn's and Nathaniel's bond it just becomes stronger and stronger she starts saying that he's the only person that fully 100% understands her philosophy and her ideas her mind blah 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 so the affair actually begins when Nathaniel is 24 and Ayn is 49 she's 25 years older than him and the way it comes to happen is that there were they were in a car right they were coming back from Canada or something from watching some I don't know a musical show I don't remember but they're driving and in the car is Barbara Frank and Nathaniel's sister Elaine and Ayn 
and Nathaniel. And Ayn and Nathaniel are in the back while the, the other two are in front. And so they're really happy for whatever reason. And so Ayn just starts complimenting Nathaniel like, oh my gosh, Elaine, did you know your brother's so smart? He's, he's amazing, blah, blah, blah. And it just starts escalating. Like he's really the ideal man. Like, you know, just being very over the top. And so Nathaniel is like super, you know, super happy that she's saying all these things to him. And even though there's like in the back of his mind, there's like, I don't know if I should, you know, say this, but he starts returning the compliments. Like, no, I, you are amazing. You're like this genius, blah, blah, blah. And then the compliments turn like, I guess romantic, even though there's like three people, three other people in the front. I don't know what I would do without you. No, I, I don't know what I would do without you. You're like, you're like the most, the most amazing person I've met. And like, it's just weird. And everybody in the front seat is like, like pretending they don't hear, but they do hear. Anyways, it's just like, it's like a turning point. Like Nathaniel knows like, okay, shit, what just happened? So eventually, uh, after they return, when they have a moment alone, Ayn and Nathaniel talk. Ayn's like, hey, we need to talk about what happened in the car. And Nathaniel's like, yes. And she's like, did you mean what you were saying? What you were saying to me? Cause I meant it. And Nathaniel's like, yeah. At that point, he feels like, I think I might be in love with Ayn Rand. Even though deep down it was more like, like he's in love with her mind and her ideas you know he's just overwhelmed and he felt like he he was probably in love with Ayn especially since like his relationship with his wife Barbara was like on the rocks but him and Barbara always had a strong friendship but romantically it just wasn't working out so and probably Ayn had this like she has been married to Frank for a decade but he has never been able to match her energy her intellectual hunger blah 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 which is not an excuse for an affair, but, but like that will tell you why they would rationalize that what they were about to do was okay. I still think it's not okay, okay but anyways. <sighs> anyways, they're like, so like, I mean, two people like us, they should be together and I know we're married, but like, it's it's all basically at the beginning is all Ayn's idea. She's the one like pitching this to him. Like, what if we tell our spouses that we would like some time alone every now and then? And, and Nathaniel's like, well, I don't know how that's gonna play, but let's let's try it. And so they do, they, they gather their spouses and they're like, hey, so as you can tell when we're in the car, there was this realization that Nathaniel and I are like a match made in heaven and we love you guys so much. We would never want to like stop being with you, but I feel like we need to, we have earned the right to be together in some way. Like they, it's just, it's just crazy. Like the way they pitch it and I she, uh, him and Nathaniel they agree that it would be romantic but not sexual they tell they tell their spouses all we ask is for you to let us be alone two nights a week um, it's not gonna be sexual but we, we feel like we burned this like do, don't you agree that if we are each other's highest values we should be together like it makes me think that she knew Frank would go along with it because there is something we don't know about their relationship there's something about Frank and her like some sort of agreement that they had that made him agree to this that's my suspicion like they knew something about their relationship was lacking which I will never know what it was although I have a suspicion but anyways they pitched this to Barbara and Frank and at first they're like they don't really know what to say but eventually they click and they protest like hell no how like we're not gonna allow this like are you mocking us like am I a joke to you but I it's like oh so you're gonna like leave me just because I want this like small thing like no we, we love you you guys you guys you are my husband blah 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 it's crazy and like Nathaniel kind of goes along with it and tells Barbara the same arguments that that Ayn's giving Frank and eventually it's just crazy that Barbara and Frank agree they're like yeah okay you can have your two nights and it's crazy because you know Nathaniel talks to Barbara later and she's like yeah no you know what yeah I mean I want Ayn to be happy I love her so much and, and if being with you having some time along with you is gonna make her happy then yeah and and I mean honestly Barbara didn't fully love Nathaniel so aside from having a slightly bruised ego it wasn't so high stakes to her as it would be for a woman who was truly in love with her husband so it begins 
they start having a non-sexual affair where they would spend two nights a week alone you know just hanging out but very soon after they begin i think it's three months after they, they start is they realize that it's gonna have to be sexual <laughs> and they tell their spouses like i know we said it wasn't sexual but like it has to be like for a connection to be real like you need the sexual and the other two agree i mean i don't know what the fuck was wrong with them but they they give them their blessing and you know ayn rand and nathaniel start hooking up and at first it's like great like nathaniel is just like loving it and so is ayn but as the months go by nathaniel starts having doubts like like am i really in love with ayn or like or am i just like in love with her mind like what's going on like i'm having doubts and ayn would like pick up on this you'll be like what's wrong with you you're you're acting strange you're not giving me your full attention your mind seems to be somewhere else so they would get into like little quarrels and long discussions about why are, aren't you acting like you're as into me as you say you are blah 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 uh, this is just the beginning of more mess which tells you like romance it's is very complex you could be the smartest person in the world like I ran and when it comes to romance you're still gonna make mistakes like when it comes to the heart anyways oh by the way at the end I'm going to go into a deep dive analyzing what was wrong with this how to look at this if you're an objectivist or a new fan of Ayn Rand but I need to finish the story first so around this time Ayn Rand was getting close to finishing writing Atlas Rock and so she's having an affair with Brandon she feels fulfilled finally after many years and one time when they're having a conversation she tells Nathaniel she's like hey when I'm finished the Atlas stroke I'm thinking of dedicating it to you I'm thinking of dedicating it to you and Frank it would say to Frank O'Connor and Nathaniel Brandon what do you think about this and like for that Nathaniel was like oh my god like you know it's like a dream come true to have this full validation from Ayn like he had he, she had changed his world when he was 14 and now she was was about to like recognize him to the world as like her equal kind of like her intellectual equal so yes the affair continues and right from the beginning Ayn Rand was like oh by the way this should never ever get out like none of our friends can know no one can ever know because this will destroy my reputation people wouldn't be able to understand what we we're doing like in her mind there was a logic in what they were doing was good like she didn't see it as bad which is one of those things that you're to be like all right Ayn Rand was human her philosophy is right at least according to my opinion but I judge some of her actions to be wrong actions in her personal life anyways so at this point they're getting close to hitting that two-year mark that they had said like they would stop and you know kind of like Brandon's kind of like relief that they're coming it's gonna come to an end because he was having more and more doubts about how he felt for Ayn and he starts dropping hints to Ayn like hey i don't know if this is the right thing to do what we are doing to our spouses you know like maybe we should reconsider this and anytime he would kind of like hint not even fully say like i want to stop this like just hint at it apparently i would be like what do you think this was a mistake do, do, uh, do you not know how to make choices like well he could be like no 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 yeah yeah so they kept at it like because he did love her but he had conflict conflicting emotions about it so at some point when they're really Reaching the two years of the affair, there, uh, Ayn and Rand and Brandon are together alone. And she's like, Remember when we said this should only last two years? Well, wasn't that stupid? I mean, this is wonderful. Shouldn't we keep this going forever? And Brandon's like, Even though internally he was screaming, like, No, I don't think this is right. He was so afraid of losing Ayn and he was trying to convince himself that, of course, he should be in love with the most intelligent woman. In the world that he just said yeah i agree so it's kind of like that meme where like everything's burning but he's like this is fine he knew that this would create more trouble and yet he went along with it like he he was just scared of losing ein if he stopped the affair so they continue their affair and uh, i think he maybe i don't know i don't know uh, maybe it goes on for one more year or two more years or something like that he actually don't i don't remember the timeline but it goes it goes longer than two years and 
then eventually Iran finishes writing Atlas Shrugged and the book is published and it endorses Nathaniel Brandon as like her intellectual heir. The book is dedicated to him and to Frank O'Connor. It's like a big moment for everybody. And Iran was really, really happy. And, but soon after the publication of Atlas Shrugged, uh, Iran, according, according to Brandon, she starts falling into a depression brought about by the fact that nobody really, I mean, there were good reviews of Atlas Shrugged. The book was selling really good, but there wasn't anybody like really intellectually prominent that came out to defend the book or to praise it. So she was really disappointed in that, that no, there was not like a really big bright mind that would stand up for the book. And she was also very disappointed with the way the culture was going. She was just, you know, depressed. And because she wasn't feeling her best, the affair stopped, at least sexually. They would still meet up alone, but they stopped having sex because she was just, you know, I guess just not in a place where she could express herself sexually. And obviously Nathaniel was relieved. He's like, whew. So yeah, Nathaniel was kind of happy that the sex aspect of their relationship had stopped. So he was kind of hoping that uh, with some time, Iran could realize that, you know, his t her time and Nathaniel's time for romance had passed, especially since she was getting older and he's still a young man. You know, he was she was relieved. And so they continued their friendship. He, con he continued being her rock, having long conversations, blah, blah, blah. And years, actually years go by of them not having sex because it took Ayn Rand a long time for her to recover. And throughout this time, Nathaniel and, Brand and, and Barbara are still married and they're working on their relationship, but they just don't, they just don't vibe. The only times they get along are where, when they're working together. Cause at this time they were, they were probably starting the Nathaniel Brandon Institute, which was an institute that Ayn Rand had endorsed as an institution to spread her ideas. And he was led by Nathaniel. It was called the Nathaniel Brandon Institute. And so a lot of new fans of Ayn Rand would come to listen to lectures imparted by Brandon and other people. Anyways, we need to skip to the to the other thing that is going to disrupt the world of these people of Frank, of Barbara, of Ayn and Brandon. And the thing is that Brandon met someone he's going to fall in love with. And by this time, Patricia and Larry had already joined Ayn Rand's circle of friends because she had a, a small but sizable group of people who would come to her house, hang out, discuss philosophy, discuss ideas, discuss psychology, blah, blah, blah. So, so Larry and Patricia became part of that world. And Ayn would say that she liked Patricia so much and blah, blah. Ayn Rand, Nathaniel and their spouses, they attended a Patricia's wedding to Larry. Anyways, it isn't until I think about four years years after Nathaniel first met Patricia that their affair begins uh, about four years later they had they start like talking to each other more and they kind of confess that yeah I mean I'm I'm in love with you oh I'm in love with you too and but they're like oh but we're married like we can't do this but and Patricia is so in love with him that she's like okay so you cannot leave your wife we can have an affair if that's the only way I can be with you I don't care we can have an affair and then Brandon's like all right you need to think about this because I'm, I'm about to drop some truth and if you can handle the truth we can have an affair if not you know we go our separate ways so he tells her about his complicated relationship with Iron Man he's like so I so me and her used to have this sexual affair and now it's not sexual anymore but in a way she's hoping that in the future when she feels better we can rekindle our romance and I'm not really that interested in that anymore but I cannot just tell her that because if I tell her that I don't want to be with her romantically I'm pretty sure she's going to cut me out of her world and I cannot have that I need to have Iran in my life I cannot live without her like can you understand and Patricia was like it's like she understood that her real rival was not Barbara but Ayn and Patricia's like you know what if this is the only way we can be together let's be together so they start an affair and 
As the years went by, when uh, Nathaniel and Patricia were together, obviously uh, nobody else knew about it. And throughout this time, multiple times, Nathaniel tries to reason with Ayn, but he's never like direct, he's never like, look, we cannot be together because you're too old for me now. I love you, but like a friend, I'm, I cannot be romantically interested in you. Also, I feel like I'm interested in someone else. He just wouldn't be straightforward. He would just be like, well, we should really think about not being with each other in the way we are because of our spouses or because this could hurt you if we had ever out, if, if he would ever get out like he would use other reasons instead of telling her the truth and I would be like no I mean if I'm your highest value and you're my highest value like who cares what other people say who cares what their, our spouses say like we should we should be together and I'm gonna come out of this depression and when I do we're gonna start over start everything over like it's just it's like she would not take a hint she would not take a hint and she wouldn't understand that she was already too old for this young man anyways things get so out of control that like it's it's all so convoluted that it, it gets to the point that I, I ran is talking about making Nathaniel Brandon her intellectual heir and just it's all too much for for Brandon and during this time Barbara and Nathaniel finally divorced they divorced and it's all for the better no because they were never meant to be together but uh, Nathaniel and Barbara were we're still friends and Nathaniel's like having all these like existential crises and he eventually confides in, in Barbara like hey I've been having an affair I don't want to be with Iron romantically anymore like what the fuck do I do I'm like I'm about to lose my hair because I'm so stressed out I don't know what I'm doing like my and, and Barbara was like the fuck if Iron finds out she's gonna freak out she's kind of like don't tell her but you have to tell her but but I'm so scared if you tell her like they knew that it would it would not be good when Iron found out. So Brandon kept it a secret for for a few years longer. And by this time, Iron had come out of her depression and she wanted to rekindle the romance, but but uh, Brandon was like, no. So he would just tell her that he wasn't ready because he was secretly having his affair with with Barbara. So for about four years, which is how much how long his secret affair with Patricia. Patricia lasted for about four years. Him and I ran were trying to work things out. I mean, <laughs> it's just crazy that she wouldn't take a hint. Like for almost four years, I think they would talk a couple times a week. Uh, they would have long conversations about how they could get back together. Why did Nathaniel didn't feel ready? Like they would talk and talk about this relationship for so long, for years, years of Iran trying to rekindle their relationship and him just saying, no but not not saying it directly they just they just keep on going on loops and and having these discussions and so apparently she was still put Iron was still pushing for it when she was 59 and he was 34 she was still pushing for it and and it got so crazy that that Nathaniel was like you know what I need to tell her I need to tell her the truth I know it's going to probably ruin everyone's life everybody's gonna take sides she's going to kick me out of the objectivist world but I cannot go on like this and I cannot keep doing this to Patricia which was the love of his life and he's like I cannot keep treating her like this I cannot I cannot keep lying like he was like so he decided to write a letter to Ayn Rand where he confessed everything and he would try to explain to Ayn Rand like how just because he wasn't romantically interested in her didn't mean that he didn't love her like he he explained that he loved her that she was the most important person in his life that he just couldn't live without her but there was no future for them together romantically or sexually so Brandon goes, gives Iron the letter, and right away she's like, You, you bastard, like, how could you do this to me? You're a liar, you, you're not who you said you, you are. Like, it, it exploded and it escalated. Iron did not care for the, the uh, Brandon's attempts to like have a friendship with her. She was just like, You lied to me, you've been lying to me all this time, and you having an affair with someone else, a lesser woman, like, that's how Iron sees things like her views on romance are a little bit weird in my opinion 
and she's like, I'm going to destroy you. At least that's what Brandon says. Apparently he says that Ayn Rand said he, she was gonna like make sure nobody ever hired him, that he was gonna be a nobody when she was through with him. Like she was triggered. I mean, it's one of those things that like, I just feel like when it comes to romance, sometimes people don't think clearly and I think she was not thinking clearly. So sh that that's it, that's the end. Like after that, after they, they break down the Nathaniel Brandon Institute just they never Iran decides never to talk to him again and eventually Nathaniel ends up moving to Los Angeles with Patricia where they get married but this really caused a lot of trouble in the objectivist movement because people were taking sides because <laughs> although Ayn Rand tried really hard to keep it a secret like it got out and it got out because of this right after Ayn Rand find out what happened she, she her goal was to make sure that Nathaniel Brandon would not be associated with her or her philosophy ever again so she wrote a statement called to whom it might concern I'm just gonna read you an excerpt of what Ayn Rand wrote in that article or that letter to whom it might concern says this is to inform my readers and all those interested in objectivism that Nathaniel Brandon and Barbara Brandon are no longer associated with this magazine with me or with my philosophy oh because she was also angry that Barbara knew about Brandon's affair with Patricia and she didn't tell Ayn Rand anyways I have permanently broken all personal professional and business association with them and have withdrawn from them the permission to use my name in connection with their commercial professional intellectual or other activities I hereby withdraw my endorsement on, of them and of their future works and activities. I repudiate both of them totally and permanently as spokesmen for me or for objectivism. So people were like, what? The people who read this, they were like, what happened? Like, what happened? They just, because Ayn Rand doesn't give a clear explanation of what the hell, what was his like flaw? What did Brandon do? And a lot of people looked up at Brandon as much as they looked up to Ayn Rand and they were like, why is she telling us not to like him? And there were rumors flying around. Apparently, Ayn Rand had made it seem like Nathaniel had done some shady business dealings. And obviously, Nathaniel was like, I'm not gonna let her ruin my reputation. So he wrote his own statement. And I'm gonna read you part of his statement, which is where like, the truth got out. I believe it's apparent to any thoughtful reader of Ms. Rand's article that whatever the truth or falsehood of any of her specific charges, the real and basic reasons for her condemnation are not given in that article. A major part of the story is obviously missing. So I'm gonna skip to the end of this. So he talks about a letter that he gave to Ayn Rand and the contents of the letter. And then he says, it was a torture, awkward, excruciatingly embarrassed attempt to make clear to her why I felt that an age distance between us of 25 years constituted an insuperable barrier for me to a romantic relationship. So when he put out that statement, everybody was like, oh, okay, now we get it. Now we get it. She's so angry. Like they had an affair and she, he doesn't want to do it anymore. And now we know, like now we know. It was just crazy because people started to doubt like, okay, the philosophy says to be moral and yet Ayn Rand here she is cheating on her husband and also lying about what she was doing, like like how should, how are we supposed to feel about this? But even Brandon in this book, many times he explains like, just because Ayn Rand made bad choices with her life, it doesn't mean that her philosophy is wrong. Like Brandon still abides, he still believes that Ayn Rand's philosophy philosophy is good and he says this in page 323 let me see he says that he said this to someone maybe his nephews or some other students of objectivism I have failed to practice the principles I thought to all of you Ayn is fully within her moral rights in severing our relationship but I ask you to remember that a philosophy is not to be judged by the behavior or misbehavior of any of its exponents objectivism is as worthy of your support as it ever was so how is one supposed to feel about this if you're someone interested in objectivism do Ayn Rand's actions discredit her philosophy I don't think so I think it discredits her in in some ways as a person like all right I used to believe Ayn Rand was like a perfect human being and now I I know she isn't I know she's flawed I know she made mistakes and I know she hurt people that she loved but when I look at her philosophy it does not discredit her philosophy instead it makes me think that she misapplied the philosophy that she developed in her life and in one way that I see it is for example rational self-interest right 
I feel like she might have thought that engaging in this affair was in her rational self-interest because she wanted to be happy, she wanted to feel good, she wanted to feel fulfilled and she wasn't getting that 100% from Frank so she thought well this should be the right thing to be with Nathaniel but I feel like she didn't really think long term of the consequences and that's one of the things about self-interest that you also need to think of the long-term consequences she didn't think of the hurt it would cost her husband to Barbara or even to Nathaniel so that's one of the things that just because a philosophy is correct it doesn't mean that it's easy to apply sometimes it's not so clear what's in your self-interest right what's really going to make you happy it takes mental work in conclusion i think everybody that that's interested in ayn rand's ideas or they in objectivism in general needs to understand something there is a difference between objectivism and ayn rand's actions and ayn rand's opinions just because ayn rand developed a philosophy that's really good it doesn't mean that her personal opinions not her philosophy her personal opinions on things her actions could not be wrong one example is that she was an av she was she loved smoking and even though there were start there were some evidence starting to come out back in the day that smoking was bad apparently she didn't believe it like she thought smoking was so great so you know i'm not saying you shouldn't smoke like it's it's a personal your personal responsibility to say how much risk you want to take with your health but you should at least admit like okay i'm, I'm smoking despite of the risks and i feel like ayn rand was like i'm smoking and i do not recognize there are any risks you know like so even smart people can make mistakes can make bad choices so just because she put so much emphasis on reason reason as the most absolute value doesn't mean that she couldn't be rational just like a lot of people who adopt objectivism as their philosophy and they want to be reasonable beings doesn't mean that they don't do irrational things sometimes or more often than not for instance i am a self-reclaimed objectivist and i strive to be as reasonable as possible but i know that i tend to act irrationally sometimes it just happens in conclusion just because iron had a lover doesn't mean objectivism is bad am i doing this meme correctly anyways this was a very stressful video to prepare it's just such a crazy crazy story and it's just so sad really everything that happened to them like i ran the serve a better ending she gave so much to all of us she gave such a life enhancing philosophy to all of us i just wish that she could have gotten so much out of it as i get out of it like you know i wish she had gotten more rewards in her life at least in terms of romance um because it look like that was one of her top values having a valuable romantic partner and she just didn't quite get it all the way like Frank was the love of her life but it seemed like he wasn't quite a good match for her at least not a hundred percent anyways uh thank you for watching i hope you're still interested in objectivism despite knowing um ayn rand's dirty little secret huh? i know i am i started being interested in ayn rand's ideas and objectivism in 2009 and i found out about her affair just a couple of years after and that did not turn me off it just made me want to learn more about her life because i like gossip but um i was still interested in objectivism and i have gotten a lot out of it it helped me improve my life a lot so i hope you give it a chance to and yeah by the way i also want to take a moment to thank all the people who have subscribed to my channel i know it's a very small channel but i really do appreciate you being subscribed and liking and commenting it just keeps me inspired to keep doing this so thank you but yeah new video coming soon and i'll see you next time